Hello, and welcome to ShePack Unleashed. I'm one of your hosts, Tanya. I'm Nicole. Welcome to your weekly dose of candid discussion and the pursuit of finding your tribe in this journey of motherhood, womanhood, and sisterhood. I'm Ashley. Join us as we leave no stone unturned. In each episode, we have heart-to-heart conversations that aim to challenge and empower one another. I'm Jenny. No more waiting. She Pack Unleashed begins now. On this episode, She EO Secrets, Turning Ideas into Income. Uh, so today we get to talk with our lovely friend Season and talk all about entrepreneurship as women in today's world, right? And how we've all kind of had our hands in this at different times in our lives and what made us jump into owning our own businesses, um, what it's been like, successes, challenges, the whole gamut is what we want to cover today. Yeah. 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 But so, let's start with the season introducing yourself. Absolutely. Tell us all about you. Yes. Welcome and to your the Pack. Welcome. Hi, I'm Season. I own a travel advising agency. But like luxury travel. I'm Lux- so luxury excited luxury to hear travel. about this. Yeah. Luxury this travel. Like yes. Also maybe a dream job of mine. Like in the back of my brain, I'm like, it would be so fun. <laughs> For act two. Um, yeah. <laughs> well, it's my act four. So Amazing. Oh, I can't that. wait to hear. Yeah. I mean, there's been a few careers in there before landing this one, but... Um, yeah, that, I don't. I don't know what else to what say. What did that about look it. like? Like, um, wh- what was your journey to get there? Oh, right. Oh gosh. Um, so, most recently, I was in real estate, and that's what I transitioned from. So, I always joke that I went from selling one pro- type of property to now I sell another type of property. Right. Okay. So Interesting. I was selling houses and residential and real estate, and then I'll, now I sell travel, and so I get to. I help people identify like what hotel they want to stay at instead of what house they want to buy. Mm-hmm. Um, so so there's, it's there's very overlap. client facing. It is. It is. Uh, but the biggest difference between those careers is um, you get people who are excited to talk about travel. And I'm, I'm an empath, so I'm very sensitive to negative emotions. Mm. And so working in real estate came with a lot of negative emotions. Very stressful environment. As you can imagine. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I you thrive. Get, <laughs> you do. <laughs> Not an empath. <laughs> well, but you get out. to sell their house. Life changes, not always within their control. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And so it came with a lot of stress. I mean, they say it's like one of the top three stresses of life is like buying a house Mm -hmm. and moving, right? And so um, I think that that became quite burdensome to me and I didn't enjoy it. Um, Have you always worked in sales in some capacity? I I suppose so, yeah, I don't, not always. So I was a college dropout. Um, okay. uh, not college dropout. Uh, you are an entrepreneur instead. Well, I <laughs> I went to school in New York City during 9-11. Oh, and it was in my wow. senior year through 9-11 and then just didn't go back after that semester. And Makes thought sense. I would, but I just never did. So I'm like big old incomplete with that area. But then I met my husband and we got married and started a family and life just kind of happened. Um, I I respect that so much though. Like that didn't hold you back and like still you're here and you've had multiple careers now in your life. Right. And you didn't let that one, you know, divergence from your planned path to cancel out those opportunities. I think that's amazing. Yeah. I kind of felt lost for a long time. Mm -hmm. But I feel like that's very much the entrepreneur spirit in terms of like the, the path that you might have thought or the path that is supposed to go is not always the path you go on and being able to be flexible and change paths and change directions and like flow with it is very like part of what it takes, in my opinion, to be an entrepreneur. I never expected to be an entrepreneur ever. Like even working in real estate, it didn't feel like, I know they say it's your own business, yeah. but I, I never felt like I was really. Mm. Cause you like, worked for like a, I worked for, for an brokerage agency. Yeah, agency. Exactly. Yeah. And so I always just kind of felt like one part of the puzzle. Um, but then something happened when I got into this industry and I did work on other, worked under other agencies first and finally. In the just, travel sphere. Mm-hmm. Okay. I did. And then, um, only recently did I finally take the leap of like, no, I, I want to do this for myself now. But 
it was a lot of imposter syndrome to get there. Yeah. I was like, am I ready? How do you know you're ready? There have been mistakes. It's not smooth. Um, no at all. journey is. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have a lot of business. Yeah. I mean, no, I mean, there are and, and, and a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. Yeah. But do mistakes weigh on you? No. Okay. So she's not playing so with the, uh, I don't, the empath, yeah. anxiety mm-hmm. sort of cycle. Tons of anxiety, yeah, no. tons of perfectionism. I mean, tons of like type I have a. anxiety and I feel like I'm type A, but I don't let the fear of what I did or what I could have done. I don't do the what ifs. I don't live in a what if land. It's like only forward. You have yeah. an amazing ability to let things go and just move forward. And, and I, I I love envy that. that. Yep. Yeah, and so you much. pivot well too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I envy that so much. What are you going to do? Lane. What are you going to do? Well, sometimes it's not always logical. Like it's not rational that. brain yeah. oftentimes. Mm-hmm. So we, you know, we touch on that often because many of us some of us have rational brains, some anxiety, of us don't. And, and we recognize it. And sometimes yeah. that's even more frustrating than the anxiety itself is like knowing that this is not rational. But yep. I digress. It does play a part though in one's choice to start a business in what all the steps that go into it. So I'm curious, how long has your current business been operating now? Well, so I've been in the industry for three years okay. and finally decided to launch Aero Travel um, in, I think it was... April of this year. Yes. So I finally launched and it's named after my son. His name is Arrow. Oh, so how perfect is that? It was. I was having a tough time coming up with a name. It just, none of it felt like it, it, it felt sensible to me. I like the double entendre. Oh yeah. Like I just was arrow. picturing like Arrow is like going places. Yeah. Like. Oh, and, and that's kind of how we named him as yeah. well is because we, well, he's named after, funny enough, he's named after a a uh, hardware store in Santa Cruz, California. Okay. <laughs> but Interesting we, choice. We love, yeah, I mean. <laughs> You'd never know. <laughs> we just no. happened to be there when we saw the word and we were, you know, trying to have babies at the time. And so it kind of was like a thing that was relevant to us. And we were like, oh, we like that. And I have a word name. So we wanted word names. And so it kind of was, you know. Yeah. But um, when yeah, I was, speaking of your name being season and you being a travel agent, I think uh, it's right. so it's lovely so to you fitting. that like you get to like travel so and see perfect. all the different seasons. Yeah, I do think so too. It is, I love like it. it was meant to be <laughs> in a season for travel. Yeah, yeah, it was meant to be. Um, that's so interesting. So like you also like niche travel, right? So like I think that's yeah. a good thing to think about. Is like why did you decide to like niche your business? You don't just do like. Disney cruises or like... I do that stuff too, but my primary focus is luxury travel. And I think that just happens to be kind of where I was um, not... I was not fully mentored, but the agency that I was at previous to this was very luxury focused. Mm. So we had... It was in the name. It was very... You know, that was kind of the drive. It was our, um, our access to properties were all in the luxury realm. And so I kind of shifted my business because it made sense. Mm-hmm. It's more quality instead of quantity. Yeah. You get more quality content and um, quality. And are you keeping with that same focus with your own business? I am. Yeah. So that what makes something like- luxury versus not? So I specialize in like four and five star experiences. And okay. Properties and Our so- kinds of vacations. Okay. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. But like, it yeah. sounds like there's a quantifiable thing yeah, that makes it luxury it versus is. not. Uh, I mean, there is a it's the four and five star That's awesome. thing. Yeah. So I'm not booking clients to stay at the Holiday Inn. Yeah. You know? I mean, and Aero Travel is doing the Sheepack Iceland trip. I am. Oh, yeah. The so coming up it next year. I'm very excited about that. We will be having that. a whole episode That's on. for Jenny's birthday? That's for Jenny's yeah. uh-huh. birthday. Happy birthday, Jenny. Yeah. <laughs> We're doing Iceland. We miss you, Jenny. September. I know. Jenny couldn't be Sorry. here today, which is my season is our guest. Yay. Um, not yay. Drink. So yeah, we Sorry. will do, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> but like, yay, we'll yeah, do a whole separate episode about the Iceland trip and like maybe have to have you come back to, um, yeah. we could even do like a debrief episode would be super fun. Ooh, yeah. I would love to hear that. Yeah. Walking I like our through all debriefs. of the experiences that we got to live. I can only imagine so much fun yeah. how it's going to go just from our like Keith trip experience to like <laughs> brace yourself for a four hour podcast. Oh, we I know. Do that. I can't yeah. <laughs> we, we talked a lot about the keys trip. Um, cool. Part what one in part two then? Yeah. Part one, two. So I'm curious to know, like was starting entrepreneurship or becoming an entrepreneur have anything to do with the fact that you had kids and like corporate life maybe didn't fit into that? That's exactly what happened. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I, I would, I always say like my 
third career, second career, I don't know, somewhere in there, it kind of overlapped a bit, was being a full-time stay-at-home mom. So that was one of the things I did for almost 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I had little side things that I did while I was doing that, but nothing that was substantial. Side things that were like relevant to your skills to keep yourself current or just projects, passion projects? No, like I was a crossing guard for an elementary school in Connecticut. Oh, that's cool. Involved. Yeah, it worked out because it was my kid's school, you know, and so I, I did little things like that. To, Love that. That was just like, oh, because I can and I mm-hmm. could take my son with me and it wasn't a big deal. And so um, little, little nothing that I did. There's this whole misconception, which I like to talk about, is that like people feel like you have to have this big career. And I don't think that's the case anymore. I feel like our generation and even, you know, the younger generation is deciding against this sort of like career. It's like what is happening in You don't this have moment? to be a VP to be successful. Right. right. Or you don't have to be like have this job your whole life or do the same job your whole life. Like you can be a contractor, an independent worker. Yeah. You can own your own stuff. You can freelance. Like there's no. If you're fulfilled and providing. Yeah. Self- there's what no, if like, you don't career. feel fulfilled? I mean, that's so that's that's, I never felt fulfilled through any of my previous. Well, I will tell you, I have a corporate career in which I'm a VP. I don't feel fulfilled from my corporate career, which is why I have seven to five other businesses. (laughs) Right. Is because which is why we have the podcast is like these are things that like make me happy and fulfill me versus pay my bills. Right. And like some people are are privileged enough to have those be the same thing. Mm hmm. Well, and you're getting closer and closer, closer every and day, closer every day. But, but like your main, yeah, other biz- your business, right? Yeah. Cozy Quarters is getting closer and closer to allowing you to leave the corporate sphere when you're ready, right? And to finally branch out and to do that full tilt for your whole family. Like, yeah, and I feel like I'm a risk adverse entrepreneur because I've never left really? the safety of oh. my corporate. I have career. never heard you describe yourself as. I never would have ever. identified you yeah. as that either. I I get it though. It's the but safety it net that gives you the like comfort to take the risk, right? That you want to where it's fun, right? Like I can it take the sense. risk to start businesses to try things because I have the corporate career that fuels those things. Makes sense. Yeah. It is scarier to just cut it all off and go Mm -hmm. full time in a business. It is riskier. I'm risking more than just myself. I have kids and a house and a family and like things I have to provide for, which makes it more fearful for me to actually do those things. I guess that's more the road I kind of went down. Yeah. I left corporate America, very stable job. I was there for 11 years, right? And left to do my own thing. And because my partner had a full-time steady income that we knew that we could make do on if I totally failed, right? And like eventually I closed that business down. And like I part of me still feels plays with that idea of failure, right? Because it wasn't doing, it didn't succeed in the ways that I wanted necessarily, right? But like it was the right choice to move away from it. But it was successful at the time you needed it it to be successful. It was. And it allowed me to be home with my son. My son was a baby. I was trying to breastfeed in a corporate office and that... It was really hard. I was struggling after my daughter was born. I had a lot of mental health issues. Yeah with being away from her, it's mm-hmm. like, it's just not natural. The way we sort of address motherhood and yeah. working Yeah, I mean, we could be here like for 600 hours <laughs> talking yep. about how the U.S. does not support mothers. It's really hard. Yeah, yeah. in really this hard. economy. Yeah. But it's interesting, we've talked about all the sort of like freedom a little bit of like starting business, but like what are the challenges, the risks, the scary parts, right? The things that like maybe you don't think of when you're like, I mean, there's the financial uh, risk oh, I think that we all just the touched on. I haven't done it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you have like she Dabbled, yes, yeah. and all the she pack things, but I, I am not able to take that amount of risk. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you have separate goals. Your goal is to retire early. Correct. And your path is corporate money to retire faster. I mean, yeah, that's kind of been what it is, but the stability really helps because I don't yeah. have... I don't have the the privilege of a partner where I can like rely on that stuff just because of his career choices. But that's, that is what it is. Like mm. I am the stability. If I quit, my husband would be so pissed off <laughs> and he'd be like, I'm quitting first corporate so that he can go run our business full time. 
I love that so much. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, you're not doing it for ourselves. Absolutely not. I relate to your story. I mean, I, I got a corporate job after my son started first grade post COVID. Mm-hmm. He was, went into first grade and the agreement with us buying this house was that we were going to become a two income household. Mm-hmm. And we had been a one income household for almost 10 years yeah. at this point. So it was like, okay, the commitment is we're going to buy this. We're going to build this house mm-hmm. that we have and we're going to become a two income household. And so I had, a, I had to get a job. I got a job of January after like January, 2022, I think it was. I started. Okay. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm in like my third year now. So January, 2022. And I simultaneously started this side gig of right. doing travel. And I quickly realized how miserable working in corporate America made me. And I no longer could tolerate it. I was laying in the fetal position of our home office on the floor, like just sobbing about how much mm. I hated it. And my husband finally said to me, he's like, I, be- I didn't believe in me. That he believed in me. And he yeah. was like, I believe in you and you can do this. And you seem really happy when you're doing it. I was doing, it was like my, you know, they say you have your nine to five and then it was your five to nine. That was mm-hmm. my five to nine. And I was slowly building and slowly building. I made almost no money that first year, mm. but it was something that I, I saw like a passion and interest, something in. And that and you enjoyed enough to do in the evenings, at nighttime, yeah. right, and time away from your families. But like, I think that speaks volumes to your commitment to it and, and your enjoyment of it, right? That you were willing to make that time for it. But I also had his income to fall back on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That is a big deal. I didn't have another... I didn't have another income to fall back on. So we had our, thankfully we had his corporate career right. to fall back on. Right. But if I was on my own, I probably would have never journeyed down this path because I wouldn't have been able to take that. Yeah. I mean, risk. even though I'm not on my own, my husband and I both have corporate careers, but we both have high powered corporate careers and it is hard to walk away mm-hmm. from the money. I'm not going to lie. Like it's our biggest struggle. Mm-hmm. Like how do you walk away yeah. from six figure salaries each? Right. Or even just one, taking one down when you've grown accustomed to a certain lifestyle, lifestyle, right? We'd have to make serious changes in. Well, and there are commitments that you've made along the way, right? The house that you chose has now committed you to a certain level of income as well. Like you can't suddenly just be like, well, unless you wanted to move, which I is love this house. Plan. I'm not moving. So yeah, it's, <laughs> it's interesting how that all starts to snowball as Don't well. Call those golden handcuffs. Yep. Mm-hmm. I yeah. Love, hate them. Love, hate the golden handcuffs. Is there like a tipping point for you guys though, where there is. it starts to like financially make more sense to put the time into what was your five to nine? I mean, how do you decide when it's time to, to switch? Well, for me, it was, I think it was an it was an opportune time. So it was post COVID. Mm. People were ready to travel again. People were starting to travel again, and people felt a little bit unsure of it. And I'm a researcher by nature, so mm. even though I was only starting to travel again myself and things of that nature, I'm really good. I'm I always refer to myself as gritty. Like I'm gritty. Like I can I may not have the answer, but I will find it out. Mm-hmm. And so I have resources. I know where to go for it. And so I just kind of dove in on the information pile and was like trying to gather information and and people really appreciated my resourcefulness. Mm-hmm. And so I got people who were like, we haven't traveled in the last two years. We don't really know where to start. Where is safe to travel right now? What can we do so that daunting. makes sense? Like we want to yeah. go somewhere, but but what is okay? Like where can we go that has low cases of COVID or is fun for the family? Uh, you know, and then people get into the, we live near RDU. Mm-hmm. Like we don't want to have a connecting flight. We would like mm-hmm. to have a, a direct flight, no more than five hours. And it just becomes something that people... They have full-time jobs. They don't have the time to research, and mm-hmm. I did. So yeah. it was kind of a – it was a perfect – you say the universe sort of blessed me in that moment. Yeah. I happened to express an interest in going into this field. It was like one of those things that I always kind of – I had told my husband for years. And this is why I was like, listen to the little voice inside your head. Ashley, are you listening to this? Listen. <laughs> no, I'm listening to that little voice like she told me. No, yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Go listen to the little voice inside your head because the little voice inside my head would always tell me that I wanted a job that took me places Mm travel-wise. And that meant like I didn't know what field. I didn't really care what field. But at the time, it was just I want a job that I have 
interesting travel experiences. Like, don't take me to middle of nowhere. Montana for, like, a conference. Well, Montana's beautiful. Uh, but you don't know what I mean? Like, in a conference to, room in a hotel. Yeah, like, that's what I mean. Like, yeah. I don't want to uh, go stay. Yeah. Don't, don't put me up at the Holiday Inn and, and like, you know, like, I wanted a, a job that had like really good travel perks. Mm-hmm. I have a job that has really good travel perks. I mean, can I take me with it's a requirement. You. That's a job requirement. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Like, I hey. manifested the fuck out of this if, one. If like, you need a buddy, love it. <laughs> sign us up. <laughs> Just listen to that little voice. Because that when, when I like drilled down into what it was that I wanted at my core, it was that. It, that resonates with me so much because I, I know we had an earlier episode last season about like corporate work versus like part-time work and kind of filling in. And like, I, you know, was sort of the outcast where you guys have these amazing, impressive corporate careers. And, you know, I left corporate America, worked from home for five years, and then I've been doing odd jobs for, you know, like I've worked as a personal assistant for three years now in people's homes. And I love what that I got to help people in their homes and their families and became a part of their families in a way that was really fulfilling in that respect. But also I can only do... 10 loads of laundry in three hours is, is a lot. Right. And to do that day after day, after day, after day, and, and I was go like, home and then go home do your own. And so then yeah. I finally was like, if does somebody, you know, do it at your I house? want a Tell job, somebody else does it I house. want a job that provides me an income that allows me to travel and for me and my family to travel and to get more experiences that I grew up having. And I want to do more of that. And I want to contribute to our family being able to do that more. And so I looked through, I did a lot of soul searching and I evaluated my skill sets. I was like, I'm really good planner. I'm very organized. Like I can go back into corporate America. I can get a high paying job as a project manager. I'll get the certification. I'll do the damn thing and slog it out and get the money to travel, right? How'd that go? (laughs) It went in the trash. It went in the trash real fast, right? I started doing that certification course and I was like, I can't even get through the certification class. Yep, you found out real quick. Getting up every single day of the week to go do that for nine and ten hours a day, like I, I would be in the fetal position. You and I are in very similar. Right? And so then I was like, okay, back to the drawing board. What are my skill set? What are my interests? And then how do we make that happen? And like, sure enough, like we go on a girls' weekend, and Nicole looks at me and she's like, Tanya you ready to go? Like the design business is ready to go. It's time. time. When you're ready, I'm ready. And I said, let's go. Like, let's do that because I love style. I love shopping. I love helping other people enjoy that and embrace it. I love helping other people spend money. That's super fun, right? And like get something that they love, but you have the inclination to do the research, to do the planning, to like source all the things, right? And so I was like, this is amazing. And so now I'm finally like, I I left my personal assistant job officially. I still work at my gym like two and three days a month you know, to stay in that community. But like, I am finally able to say I'm doing the Lush Living Designs job full time now. And Nicole and I are partners 50-50 on that. So, That's you know, amazing. brought to you by She Pack Unleashed. Yeah. Cozy Quarters <laughs> and all but the like, other businesses. to take a step back, it's not like you haven't been doing this also for three years. Yes. Right. That's true. So I kind of, you know, had that runway Mm-hmm. right? To exercise it. And I still remember like you would send me like as a contractor, right? You would mm-hmm. send me design jobs that you didn't have time to do. And I would literally choose to work on those projects versus scrolling TikTok on my phone or, you know, playing a third hour of video games with the kid, right? Like I was like, I, I, I really want to fit. Can I go finish that design real fast? Cause like I was almost there and it was really fun. And I it sparked something in me and I finally leaned into it and, and embraced it. And it's been really yeah. fun. So to take a step back in terms of like cozy quarters is one of the businesses that my husband and I own together. Prime. I would say that's your primary, it's our business. primary business yeah. um, that we own and it's property management um, for short-term rentals and long-term rentals. And part of that has always, it started with like me designing Airbnbs. Like with me putting up my first Airbnb myself and then people would be like, oh, I want you to do that for me. Can you do that for my sh- my rental property? Just make it look pretty and Just make, make me money. Look, yeah, and you money. fell into like a look Smart. too. Yeah, and it like started like escalating that way. Like never did I advertise or did we like go after it, right? It's sort of just like word of mouth. This person told this person who told this person who called me on this person and ended up in there while I'm still doing a corporate career, right? So we started bringing in people to help with it, right? And so part of that was like, hey, I have to do these Airbnb designs. I don't have 
full time to like design like, it. Me, me. I was like, Tanya, you want to come <laughs> help me with this, right? Like you helped me with the first one we did ourselves when we went yeah. to Ikea and like shopped it all. You made yeah. the art for the walls. I did. In the yeah, very Yeah, that first gold Airbnb. leaf art was so cool. Yeah. I remember that. <laughs> and so it's like not something that, and we've talked about it, like, oh, we yeah. should just do this. And then we kept getting more interest for residential and I did not have the bandwidth. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hold, please. I can't take on that. So then I said, all right, Tanya, I've got the interest. Are you ready? We're going to do and it. And you know me. You know how risk averse I yeah. am and how long it takes for me to make a decision. I literally, I think I called you up like three days later after we had that conversation, came home from that trip. I was like, how do we do this? We got, and a like, like, week later, go. we had an LLC. And we had a, <laughs> a bottle of wine and an LLC. And Born <laughs> was lush living with a bottle of wine. I love it. development side like how does that work yeah I think it's interesting it was one of the very first conversations we had because I am also used to being a I wouldn't say like sole like I work within my husband maybe start there like your guys experiences as a sole proprietor of yeah. of a, a, a business yeah where you wear all like the you. hats you wear all the hats you make all the decisions it's tiring right yeah I mean there is definitely decision fatigue that comes around like I do and are you going to make like is this software the right choice? Right. Is this finance like investment the right choice? Like, do I, I spend like my time here? I to outsource certain things. Yeah. I was going to ask, yeah. if yeah. you do it soup to nut, do you do your marketing, your financing, the, I mean, obviously all the research I'm and the travel still and still working booking. on the marketing, but okay. <laughs> I've never, I have not figured that out really well yet. Uh, there are definite parts of it that I'm still, yeah. you know, working on, but I've had to outsource the bookkeeping because that's too tedious for me. The parts that I love, and it's interesting, I feel like we have so much in common, but the parts I love the best are the projects. I have, I always say I have like professional ADD mm. a little bit. <laughs> I can't be in a corporate job because of the monotony of it. Mm. It drives me crazy. And so like you were describing that, like can't get through the certification. I can't do this every day. Like it's too much. Yeah. I felt I related to that so much, but I love when I have a client, each trip is unique. Each requirement is new. Each place that they're traveling to is, is, you know, its own thing and everything is customized. So each project is a new experience for me. I don't get bored. I'm, it's not monotonous, even though the steps and the routine of it might be similar. It's still a whole brand new thing. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's the same for you. I like each design. You're going to love that. Yeah. You're going to love having, I mean, and I'm sure you already do, but like a new project, a new mm-hmm. place. And, uh, oh, what does this, what does this space need design wise? Yeah. That's the same. Like, what does this trip need design yeah. wise? Right. And so like, how do I design this trip? How do I design the space? Yeah. That's fun for me. Yeah. It's fun, but then you still have to do the bookkeeping. I and hate you that still part. have to do like as a, someone has to do the someone operations. Has to, and then when does it make financial sense? Yeah. right? As a sole entrepreneur to source that out, right? Yeah. Like, and that is where I struggle the most. Do you do all of it yourself? Yeah. Oh my. This is where I struggle the most is like, I hate the idea of paying somebody for something I could do. Something you could do if you had the time. Well, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, when you say, <laughs> <laughs> what, why you got to make sense why like you gotta that, Why you got to make Ashley? sense like that, okay? <laughs> you, you have know? the bandwidth I mean, to do it all? I, I don't. Bandwidth? I don't huh? have, what is that? So yeah. bandwidth, but also from the outside looking in, I imagine there's a point where your time is monetarily more valuable going out and generating new business than it is to do the operation. 100%. That's how I felt. But the, the, the choice as a sole entrepreneur, right, as somebody who's making all the decisions, is like, what is that tipping point? right? Mm -hmm. Versus having a partner, you can kind of bounce those ideas off of each other and say like, is this the right moment? Is this, should we do this? What do you think about this? And like, then I don't feel like solely responsible for the like, Mm -hmm. the decision of it, it, right? That's fair. Um, Versus like, the business with my husband, I'm like, hey, what do we do? I don't know. What I mean, do it is a partnership yeah. with you and him, right? But it's but more I guess like, it's, it's different when you're married, I feel like, because it's more yeah. like, he's like, I don't know, what do you want to do? And and it's, you know, the same, you guys are bringing sort of the same mentality, I guess, now to it at this point, because right. you've been doing it for so many years. Yeah. So this is like a fresh, brand new partnership, right? Yeah. You know, first 
official partnership, my first official partnership in business. Yeah. And I think it's really helped, you know, that we've been working together for over three years now Yeah, in a professional capacity, but I was always a contractor to you, right? right. So I would default to here are some options, you take your pick and we'll run with it, right? And so now that's, I think, been a shift where it's yeah. a 50-50 decision and there are times where, you know, I have a feeling I might just kind of step back and be like, go for it, girl. Like, absolutely. Are you and guys then, designing each project together? It depends. There are some we design together and there's some that like she would take the lead on and then I QC and say, hey, I think it needs this. Or like I would take the lead on and she mm -hmm. says, hey, I think it could use this. It depends on like what our bandwidth looks like, right? Who has the most ability in the client like needs, right? And it also goes by style, right? We yeah. both have a little bit of a different style, and we're not trying to put our style on our clients, but like also it influences things. Understanding so. what like I'm not gonna be like who Your aesthetic matters. Yeah. yeah. Right. Like yeah. I'm or if not you have previous experience with a certain aesthetic, right. I yeah. think can be certainly beneficial. I also have realized that creating color palettes is not my favorite thing. And you can bang that out in like five minutes flat. So yeah. it's like hmm. I think we're really looking for those ways to harness each other. I'm not going to be the one doing all Did of that. Did that give you a little bit of peace knowing you yes. were joining yeah. and, someone but then, who like, is I'm creating method? all the work documents. Right. right. Like I'm creating the contract document and the invoice document and I created our logo and our branding kit. SOPs and... are not my strong suit. They live in my head. <laughs> Standard uh, operating yeah. procedures is where, I mean, I helped you with Cozy yeah. as a contractor doing some of that. And so we kind of got to test the waters a little bit there yeah. and see, you know, where we could we could bring the most bang for a buck. Cause I think it also boils down to if you're looking into getting into a partnership, um, it creates efficiencies, mm -hmm. right? Rather than oh. someone banging their head against the wall, just faster than if you don't want to do it. For example, social media. I know because I am full time in my role in this right now, I am going to need to lean into that more than I want to currently. But so now we're going to do like a, a whole day, just a social media blitz day, get the ball rolling, oh, get my great. brain around it. Create again. all the content. And then I'm sure once I break that mental dam, I can like roll with it and get it going, you know, but I think it's, that's one way where we're going to be able to help each other too. Yeah. I also think it's important to understand like, um, what you're saying, the strengths, like I am not a great executioner <laughs> of the things. I'm the big picture sales marketing mm -hmm. person. Yeah, we go to the networking meetings. I have the spreadsheet of all the contacts we've met at the networking meetings like, and their contact information and the conversations we had and the details about them. And, and somebody like, comes up to me, he's like, oh my God, thank you so much for helping <laughs> me. And I was like, I have no clue who you are, but you're so <laughs> welcome. <laughs> like, I literally can't. But that's the thing is like I've told Tanya and my husband they're going to create a support group together of <laughs> things Nicole promises clients that they then have to go execute. Well, there might just come a day where you have to just <laughs> reap what you sow, my friend. So Well, it hasn't happened yet. <laughs> just so true to that. But one day maybe. But like seems like, what did you just tell that client we're going to do? <laughs> I think it's really special you guys have each other for this partnership, yeah. actually. And I can see how um, maybe, maybe – had I had someone that I wanted to share that with, that would have happened a lot sooner for me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's nice to share it with someone. I also wonder about someone, because I'm sure businesses can lead to friction in a relationship. Yeah. 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 Thankfully, you guys have a long term relationship, right? Like you're not new friends. You're not yeah. navigating that. You guys are really comfortable with each other. Yeah. And you can go Jenny through that. Jenny keeps but. insisting that we need a business prenup. Oh. So that if the is very concerned, out, she's that is very so funny. Concerned. <laughs> and she's like, so I have had partnerships. I say it so very loosely in terms of like working with people I know 
not go well. Mm-hmm. I, you've told me. Go super, super sour. You've told yeah. me. To the point where, like, I have no contact with some of these people, and it didn't end well, and, like, attorneys were involved, and, like, yeah, I've, lots of I've things. seen it in, like, family businesses. It doesn't always work yeah. well. It gets so it doesn't. I think it was important when we started this to have, like, clear... There is an empath. <laughs> and so if I'm like short on something, it's not because like I have to remember she thinks I'm like me being like short for because I'm like pissed or something. But it's sure. mostly that I'm just busy. Well, also, oh, she's so much we, emotional I've intelligence. Right. Now, right. So like <laughs> it, it's it's nice. I appreciate that I have you to are remember aware you're an empath. of it. <laughs> right. But like the fact that we we will often communicate over Marco. Right. I get your face. Marco I Polo. I have uh, put us in Marco for being Polo, sponsors. Man, sponsor. Did you? I it's did. I put us time. in. So if you could, that'd point. be great. Like using that for your business communications, like there's a record of it, especially yeah. now they're doing the transcripts. You can look it up that way. But yeah. you guys, you eliminate the like what's lost. Well, in text. And it allows for quick communication yeah. that still retains the the motivation behind right. what you're the saying. Tone. It's not, yeah, the tone. You know, I feel like in, in a corporate world, right, you have, uh, what is For my last email. No, <laughs> my, last, my last email. <laughs> I mean, that's a whole different. Let's circle back oh, to that the, one. The chat, there's the one chat. Uh, teams. Teams, Webex. right? And you just get Webex, pings yeah. from teams, like you there, right? Can you talk? Is my circle very green? Cryptic, no. You know, things. And so I feel like that allows us yeah. to. Marco Polo come back is one up. of the best business tools we actually use yeah. like, across the board yeah. because it does allow that quick communication. And it can be channeled too for like different topics like other yeah. chat apps are. Right. And so I think that creating um, a partnership is actually a really great experience if you can find the right partner and it allows a little bit yeah. more like comfort. Well, and I will say, so we were, um, we were recently meeting with another designer in the area and had a lovely meeting with her and breakfast and we were chit chatting and she had started out with in a partnership. Yeah. Um, she moved and it just became no longer viable for the partner to stay in the business. And so, you know, they went their separate ways, very amenable. And I think they still work together kind of on a contract basis. But she said that she kind of misses having a partner. And she was like, you know, I'd still be open in the future of, you know, having extending to a partnership again, if the right person comes along, the right circumstances. And so, I wonder, right, eventually with your business, when you boom and you grow and your demand becomes too much for you to handle on your own, like that's going to be a great opportunity if I'm you find the right person. I'm not opposed to the idea. Yeah. It's definitely yeah. something, especially if there was a way, like, I feel like you guys balance each other in, in a way that like you're really big picture, like you yeah. said, and she's more in the details. Yeah. And I, I am more in the details. But Tanya wanted to have all the documents oh, done no. before we even started and launched. Yeah, that's really yeah, hard. Of course. Yeah. That was that was one of the advice that I was given by a more seasoned person in my industry was, and it, it really applies to any industry, including yours. But if you wait till everything is perfect and you're prepared for it to start, you may never start. So you have to get yeah. you have to, you can't wait for perfect. You have to begin. And that was really good advice for me because I'm also very similar where I would want everything sure. to be perfect well, before I jump in. And I in. just throw her in the deep end. And I think, well, I think that that's, <laughs> Classic. I think that that is one reason that I want till the cows come home and like, we're going to make millions and it's going to be great. Like, I don't know what we're doing, but like you have the vision and, and the guts to go for it that I have always like, I, I, I hold myself back often, right? I want to know exactly what I'm doing before I do it because I don't want to fail because I didn't know what I was doing. Yeah. But like you could still fail. But like I think you've said this before, fail upwards, fail yeah. forward, yeah. right? Fail like forward, you're going to fail, always. but you're going to learn something. And as long as you do learn something from it, then you're going to be better for it eventually. Yeah. Right? Like I don't take failure as a bad thing because every time you fail, you've learned something new and you figure out a new way to do something. It's a really hard mentality for me, but I am, I am recovering perfectionist. I'm getting there. But it's also one of the reasons why I didn't want you to come work for me. Yeah. I wanted you to work with me. I agree. Because I feel like I've wor- had people work for me before. And they don't have the same buy-in or the same drive. Yeah, they don't have the it stakes was too in it. Easy literally, to it to yeah. you to be like, I can't decide on this. Here you go. Right. Yeah. I also think sometimes people in a partnership, and it's good that you guys have sort of taken the time to identify your strengths and your weaknesses, and you know, and divvy it up that way. But 
lots of people will dive in on something and figure they'll figure it out or they'll get into it and they may not actually be interested in that. And that's really hard, I think, to, to take on. But you knowing your strengths and how you really are the detail person and you being more big picture and you guys sort of divvying out things that way. And the way you talk about like project management, I really identified with that because my favorite part about my industry is that there's a beginning, a middle and an end mm. to each of the trips. And like when you're designing a house, there's a beginning, a middle and an end. Yep. So with that like professional ADD, right, it's important mm. to know that you're going to have another project. You're going to be able to move on. It's going to look a little different. You're going to design something new. Yeah. Uh, I think the monotony of it can get to me. So I'm curious about yours, like in corporate America, how do you cope with, do you have monotony in, oh, your, yeah. in your job? And like how do you handle that? All corporate jobs, I think <laughs> have a lot of monotony. Yeah. I, I get around it by doing lots of initiatives mm. where there's not monotony. So I get to play the startup game for a few months at a time. Say and more to me being not a corporate and not tech savvy. Like what does that look like? You do initiatives. What does that look like? So it would be like, um, most recently built with a couple other of my, my teammates, a minimum viable product of like an AI assistant. You're still talking way too much. Like, like a teeny tiny little <laughs> itty bitty application we built. It's like okay. individual does projects. Right. Like individual to enhance the operations. Product. But in order to do that, you need to have the big picture vision. And I'm a very mm -hmm. big picture person. Look at oh, that. Look, she's your travel. And she's right. also a crazy traveler. <laughs> She can bring is, the cruise niche. I, yeah. Oh, for sure. Put me on a boat and I'm just like the happiest we person alive. We cruise a lot too. We love it. Amazing. So yeah, like for me, that's how I get my big picture stuff out. And I will like literally say to my manager, I don't know how to articulate how we get from here to this idea, but there's a fuzzy path. Help me figure that out. And like he and I have a good working relationship. So like we understand that about each other. But yeah, that's how I like break up the daily grind of resource management and budgets. But and you, you seem to be in a supportive environment where they value your voice. Thankfully I am, yes. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I've had to make my voice heard just being a younger woman incorporated. Just, it's great. And in the but, technical sphere too. Yeah. I mean, yeah. thankfully more and more that is changing. And, For sure. You know, but I, I am very fortunate yeah. to work with supportive team, supportive leadership, and like my employees are outstanding. I'm constantly proud of are them. Are there a lot of women on your team? Um, I have two female direct reports right now out of like 15. Okay. There's not many of us. I had others, but we developed together mm -hmm. and they launched into other roles and stuff. So I think that's, that's interesting good. to like, I also work in a corporate environment where it's very male dominated mm -hmm. and very few females in the, in the industry. So I think that's interesting. I like never really thought about that for the two of us. Like, yeah, that we were both in like these male dominated. Sometimes I wonder, am I not articulating a big picture idea or do you just not speak woman and like mm -hmm. this isn't making sense to you? That's probably oh. that part. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I think it's also interesting. We're both in very female dominated industries. Yes. So travel is a female dominated industry and I know design is too. Design. It's yeah. the sure. like artistic side of things and then for the two of you to be so. Oh, I live in a corporate. really strange world because That's I do fashion. finance, corporate, and then I have real estate and design and like yeah. it does I don't make sense it's balance like in terms of like I love it what 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 are you doing I don't like know you're good at all of them too so it's I mean I think good is one of those inspiring I, I think good it. is one of those constructs right like you your impression is that I'm good at it because I put on that I am good at it what you produce 100% but like I fake my way through it yeah. and I fake it confidently oh I yeah. faked my way through this business at first too. Now I feel like less imposter syndrome. Oh, yeah. Good. But at the beginning there was so much of it. And I literally would fake my way through stuff. I feel like there would be people who would ask me questions and I'd be like, yes, I know that. I will. <laughs> oh, but yeah. I didn't know that. And I would go and I would find out. Yeah. My answer because is I'm always gritty. yes. I know, you're, I know you're gritty. Yeah. And so being able to be like, yes, I know that. I, I'll, I'll do that. No problem. Mm -hmm. I can handle it. And was it what is it wasn't always perfect, but I learned a lot from it. And it was literally how my first business started. Is somebody said, "Can you do that for me?" I absolutely one hundred percent can. And at eleven p.m., <laughs> I'm creating an LLC and told my husband we started a business. He was like, "We did what?" But it's confident build, <laughs> confidence building, isn't it? Yeah, I feel like that's where my confidence really. Uh, foundational confidence mm. in this industry started for me was the faking it and taking it on and saying yes to the things that were more challenging than I probably should have at the beginning. Oh yeah. And really sort of like pushed the boundaries of it little by little. 
How long, how long did you think it took you to kind of get like your feet under you and feel good? Well, so I was doing a lot of personal assistant stuff that mm-hmm. first year that I was doing it also. So I, again, relate. Um, Same first. But then, I love it. then really stepped back from that the yeah. second year. So the second year was full time in the industry. And that was where I really, uh, I think, finally felt like, oh, I am good at this. Yeah. And I was getting enough feedback. I was seeing it. I was seeing the results. I was, I was getting um, a lot of... The thing that works the best for my confidence is a referral. It's mm. crazy how oh, uh, yeah. like a happy client being like, oh my God, I, I have... It's the I, highest I, praise that you it can is. get. It yeah. is. It's the best compliment you can give someone for someone to be like, oh, I told my best friend about you. They're planning a trip or they're designing yeah. something. And to be like, I, I sent them to you. They, there's no one else that they can go to. Or, you know, I, I told, leaving a review is amazing, but like actually telling someone, yeah. you have to use this person for yeah. this job. Mm-hmm. This is the best you'll ever find. It's such a like confidence booster. Yeah. And so I was starting to see some of that in my second year, return clients, clients sending mm. me referrals and slowly by slowly and well, slowly. Well, especially in the community we live in, yeah. like it's so very like, I don't know how to say it. Like it's very like insulated a little bit. I mean, it's a big community, but it's also small yeah. in the way like we all know each other. Yeah. And everybody uses everybody in the same like. Well, that's what I love about our community yeah. though, is that we are really supportive of small businesses yep. and we want to focus on, you know, oh, our neighbor has this business. I'm going to, no, no, mm-hmm. not everyone in our community is that way. We've talked about that. Yeah. However. There's certain people. There are certain people. Who might've been on the board. <laughs> oh my I shall not name names. I'm fired. <laughs> oh boy. Uh, don't fire me up. Somebody actually mentioned this person in another conversation. We were together and I got fired up. And like, Tony was like, I have never. We got in the car later. I was like, excuse me. I need the, I need, <laughs> I need the tea. She's gotten fired up with me about it too. I had no idea. Yeah, until all of a sudden one day I was like, damn. That <laughs> blows my mind that like someone wouldn't want to like keep it in the family and, and support Oh, that's a small not business. the problem. They keep it right in the family only. <laughs> like and Preferential not with the treatment community. to some and, and yeah. not not universally oh. sharing the wealth and the resources and recommendations. And this is different than my experience of what I'm referencing. Yeah, yeah. There, I are other, there, are Sorry. Other, <laughs> there are other people that I, I do find I don't know. I, anyway, but we don't need to get into all yeah, of that. I digress. Um, but we but care about supporting small businesses there's a lot, of a lot in this community. And that's how we've kind of gotten referrals mm-hmm. in too, right? So like thinking about that, what would be like your top tip for a woman who wants to start a business? I'm listening. Oh and my like gosh. is ready. I, yeah, I have a question it. for you. I want to circle back to you. Okay. Well, I, 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 I think you're going to understand it too, but I feel like networking and your circle of influence is so important. And I don't mean your family because they end up being the worst clients ever. (laughs) Breach. And I know you know that too because we've talked about that. And like, I don't mean your, your family outside of your, like, my husband is the most... Create... Uh, an authentic network of people. Mm-hmm. I, the, the people we would see networking for that was like purely for the sake of networking. Cause that's really where we met. We met yeah. in a networking group yeah. before we met in yeah. spicy book club. So, but going to something like a book club has been so good because it's, it is these are authentic relationships. I'm yeah. friends with these people. We go places, we do things together, yeah. but half of them are my clients now too. And so it's just kind of naturally happened and not out of force, but just because, yeah. you know, we developed a, a level of trust. And so to me, that has been huge. And I think being, being in a community where you can be known, be involved, make friends, have your name out there in that way. I think it's also just like putting yourself out there. Yeah, well, that's what networking right. is though. Yeah. You have to show up for yourself. Right. You have to put yourself, and you're really good at it. I just, I, listen, <laughs> was this megalomaniac? Is that the word? Listen, I believe in myself 150%. I love that. Bottle like, it up and sell it. Like, right. Like, like I, I drink it. my, I drink my own Kool-Aid. Okay. <laughs> like that's the problem. I drink my own Kool-Aid. Although you were a bad influence in our last networking group together. You were oh, getting me in trouble. I know. She was getting me in so much trouble. I think we got separated. <laughs> we got separated. Um, <laughs> like the last two meetings we yeah. would get separated. Like, And I think that's what you have to, like, that would be my biggest advice to somebody is like, believe in yourself, right? Like if you can say it with your full chest that like you are this person and you're going to do it and believe it, like 
what's going to stop you? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, nothing's going to stop you if you, like, just go for it. Like, I also think, like, knowing your brand is really important. Yeah, for like, sure. My brand is, my personal brand is that I give excellent service. And is every trip perfect? No, but I'm going to show up for all of it in the sense of like giving amazing service throughout the experience. So even if the hotel ends up not being Mm -hmm. excellent or some part of it ends up not being excellent. You can't control all of it, right? The weather, something happens. Go on a trip with the DePippo household and everything (laughs) that could go wrong always does on every single. It was, and we didn't want to bail on it just in case. You <laughs> like, we, we wanted, wanted to, to be, be there. there. We <laughs> needed to be there. We were very excited to be there, but the 10 hour delay was brutal with kids, yeah. you know? And so not everything goes perfect on trips, including my own. Um, but, you know, having, knowing that I had like for my clients that I'm going to like show up through it. And if I can help, I can assist. I can be there as a resource. That's, that's my brand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think it's so interesting. I was just thinking like my favorite movie as a kid was Peter Pan. Uh-huh. Like, interesting isn't that right because it's a it's good like, conversation for abigail yeah because it's like <laughs> <laughs> i think i can fly uh-huh. or like we believe in fairies if we just clap like if you want the thing to happen you are the person that makes it mm-hmm. happen and you just believe it or you clap and it like does happen right well, that's like, that whole like manifestation thing. yeah yes. it's like the very much i'm a very much manifestation you were person. doing that from Me a too. very early age yeah. yeah i'm a very much like if I, I can manifest it, it too. I manifest yeah. with the best of them over there. My husband's always like, please stop. <laughs> can you stop <laughs> no more manifestation? For five. <laughs> so I would say for me, right, the authenticity is huge because I think that that shows through everything that you do, no matter what your industry is. If you are not authentic, it will start to show. The cracks in that facade will start to show and it will affect your work and your happiness and all of those things, right? And the other side is surrounding yourself with people that are supportive. And like, that's the simplest, like most basic sort of thing, but the people who are going to lift you up in those moments of self-doubt, the people that you can be real with and not have to necessarily fake it all the time, right? So this goes beyond professional networks. I think having the professional networking connections, genuine connections will do so much for a growing business, right? But also having people like you girls, right, in those moments where I'm like, oh, I don't know. And then you're just be like, bitch, shut up. Do it. Go. Like, we are here for you if you stumble. But, like, go and do the damn thing. And, and having people around you that, that do the thing even when they're scared or even when they don't know is so inspiring. And it rubs off, right? Like, you, you will become what you surround yourself with. I 100%. Yep. Can, I, can I add to that? Yeah. Then? I think all of that, yes, and identifying your ideal client. Mm. My God, you have my oh, favorite saying in which yes. I have literally I used all the time I remember now. this and I <laughs> okay. think about I you often. Wait, I, wait, I need to hear it from oh, her You've list. heard me say it. No, I want okay. to hear it from uh, her It's right, the so best. Then, <clears throat> well, so if, if you come across a client who's, you know, not a good fit, it's okay to bless and release them. Mm. And so we, it, that's, a, that's a big thing in the travel industry. I didn't, I didn't coin it. Um, no, you coined it. Season coined it. Okay. Yeah, like in my mind, it's your thing. <laughs> <laughs> I may have introduced it in this circle, but yeah, it, was, it was not. brand do not fit within your abilities or are not a match for whatever reason. And it could be simply personality wise. And I find if you have a client who is tendency towards complaining and things of that nature, or just skew negative, that can be really difficult to deal with. Yeah, I mean, and you want to attract you, more how, of it. Sorry, this might go down a rabbit hole when we probably need to be wrapping up. But like, how do you... As a, as a consummate people pleaser, <laughs> yeah. how do you bless and release, especially if it's based on like a personality clash? It's not like this is outside of my scope. I know someone who could do this job better for you, right? Like I am happy to refer out, right? Like Nicole probably- Yeah, I've referred out. Die inside. Absolutely fucking not. But <laughs> I mean, that's the blessing part of before you release them. No, 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 no. Here's your other options. When- happening. When it's literally a personality clash, like how oh, do I've you done cross it. that bridge professionally, not risking the negative well, backlash from someone who the is nice off thing the is, rails. is that, like I said, we're project based, right? So yeah. travel is a project. I'm mm-hmm. building a specific trip for a specific client. And so I have had a client or two that I built a trip for 
And it didn't go well for whatever reason, but it was not that the trip didn't go well. It was the designing process didn't go well. Like I specifically mm. had a client who really struggled with being given. Uh, so I'm, I'm a partner, right? Like I'm coming to you with options yeah. mm -hmm. and then you have to make decisions from those options, but I'm narrowing down. I'm researching, I'm doing all of the legwork to bring Absolutely. you two or three choices for you to Out select like from. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So it is narrowed down. It is very, very specific. And then like, here's the choices. This one is under budget. This one's at budget. This one's slightly over budget. Like, where would you like to land? Here are the pros and cons of each. Well, I had a client who really struggled with making these small decisions. The final decisions. Mm. Yep. They really struggled with it. And were they looking for something more prescriptive? I, I, I'm not sure. I mean, it's pretty prescriptive I, already. I'm really, really clear about my process mm -hmm. when we have our consultation. And for whatever reason, it just didn't line up. They had different expectations. They had a lot of anxiety around mm. it and ended up giving me multiple referrals. I know. Remember I told you about yeah. that? Yeah. I like blew my mind. Um, this client will recommend me in local groups. And I like my head spins because I'm like, she gave me hell. <laughs> yeah, but she <laughs> must see why you're valuable and what you but offer for other people. Yeah, maybe that's like, wouldn't that be like, surprising she, to you to be she like, she realized like it was, it was a her, her thing. Yeah. And yeah. not about but you and your service. Blessing and releasing because I will not choose to work with her again. Has she asked you to No, thankfully a trip she her again? she hasn't. But okay. do you want like that project ended yeah. and then I don't have And then to you be, don't actively seek Correct. I don't have to be tied with her yeah. to a client beyond that project. Yeah. So if I learn something about their personality type mm -hmm. or something that's not a good fit in that project, I'm able to bless and release going forward. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have the same option when I manage people's properties. Ongoing. Ongoing. That's different. But we did have a client recently I had to bless and release. Like somebody who had been managing their property for a couple of years. Was it hard? It was, it was um, a conversation of like, I only want to work with people who want to work with me. Mm -hmm. Right. And it doesn't seem like you're happy with anything I do. So I think it would be best if we just went our separate ways. I think that's the conversation yeah. I would have almost yeah. verbatim. I, I love that. I'm going to call yeah. you the next yeah. time I need one of those. Right. And it was just a simple, like, this doesn't seem to be working out. You don't seem happy. And I only want to work with people who want to work with me. Right. And like what I'm doing mm -hmm. doesn't seem to work for what you want. So like I am, here's some other options that might work for you. I'm a boutique service. I'm not a corporate. Yeah. Like, mm -hmm all hours of the day and night, like yeah. model. So like, that's maybe what you need. That makes sense. Well, I'm so curious. I, sorry, I have one burning question and then we probably will wrap. But Ashley, after all of this conversation, I still remember like a month or two ago, you were on a cruise, right? Mm -hmm. And we've established, right? You cruise. have the corporate job. And Most like, recently it was Icon of the Seas. Yeah, girl. <laughs> it was You're coming thing. to me for the day. <laughs> <laughs> so like you, you guys travel a lot, right? And so yeah, your, four, your five combined times a jobs year. allow you guys to do the cruises and you, your whole family seems to really, mm -hmm. truly love that style of travel. It, it just works for you guys so well. And you were, you were marcoing us from your cabin and like giving us the full room tour and the full boat tour. What and I looked you dead you in your I face and I was like, Ashley, like, have you ever considered doing this, like be this, like this see, it feels like you're calling. It feels like a passion that you're so good at and knowledgeable about. Right. And that's, it's finding those things that you're already good at lean in and find a way to make money from them. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and you were like, well, I kind of have like flirted with the idea recently. Like, I know you're not ready to take the plunge, but like, does this spark anything for you or have you thought more about it? I've gone as far as figuring out what are like the tax implications because cruises are treated funny for business expenses. Like okay. I went into a rabbit hole at one okay. point of like, how would I do this? Because my corporate job lets me work remotely too. Yeah. And I actually did a whole week on Freedom of the Seas once when they were testing Starlink internet. And I was like, totally fine. Totally fine having like meetings and all that stuff. So like there's a part of me that wonders, could I? I don't know. Okay. Does all of what we've said inspire you to want to, or does it make you go like, actually, that <laughs> That's sounds not like for me. not for me? <laughs> it scares the shit out of me. Yeah. But it's inspiring at the same time. Like, I can see a world where that's something that I would.
about yeah. the Tanya. I, the- I really do. <laughs> I, I have this idea, this vision, like a North Star, and I have a purpose behind it too. But like, I don't really know how to get there, well, and I don't. If I'm wrong, season. I imagine that there are there are like travel agencies or even like Royal Caribbean, right? You could start with helping to organize trips for Royal, right? Mm-hmm. And that would give you that mentoring training runway. Yes. Be the five to nine. Yeah. Yeah. With, there's a game plan in mind. There's, there's these set pieces that you already know to work from. So some of that nitty gritty is, is already decided for you. And then eventually that you're going to find that too prescriptive and too confining Mm -hmm. and you're going to want to do it your own way and your own vision and your own clients. Right. Mm -hmm. And then it grows and then you get to like launch your own thing. It doesn't have to necessarily be like, (laughs) goodbye, corporate America. I'm doing it tomorrow. It it couldn't, it couldn't be like, like, I think it would be something that would enhance yeah. like my financial goals that I have. Yeah. Well, I was telling her, I was like, even if you just like get a corporate job at Royal, like <laughs> it probably Hello, wouldn't perks. pay as much I as know. where she's at yeah. though. So, you know, it would be a, yeah. Or if it did pay as much, it'd be like, save on the trip. Well, to be in corporate and Royal, I think you have to live in Florida. Yeah. yeah. Oh. They're building a whole new headquarters like building in Miami. Yeah, so, Miami. And Miami <laughs> is stupid <laughs> no, and expensive. Very, oh my God. Yeah. I'm so from bad. Miami. Let's oh, have a whole really? different conversation. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we share that too. The Florida, we have love. Florida yeah. love. The Florida life. But, um, I, I would say that it's different if you're working for the corporate aspect of mm-hmm. it. And there are lots of positions and there are even some that Product are- Product development would be my jam if I was there. There you go. So like there are definitely areas that you can get into the travel industry without having to be sales-based. Yep. And so that's that, what that's I that's really don't con- think I want to do. That's what I think about the the careers that the three of us have. Yeah. At the end of the day, we're designing stuff, but we are a sales-based yep. yeah. business. And we have to either sell ourselves, sell our product, sell our services, whatever it is. Yep. And you have to be comfortable with that. Yeah. And that's why my like business dabbles have not worked because I'm not comfortable with that. And I don't Mm -hmm. naturally like have strengths there. Well, and I also don't think you like selling. Like I don't. I could, people tell me all the time, my husband and my mother, you could sell ice to Eskimos. Probably. Like you could Meanwhile, I'm over here like corporate sales adjacent. I'm like, I will not sell my soul. (laughs) Yeah. Like, like, I, I won't do it. Like compensation. Well, I, I no. can sell, but it's, it's more my, when I sell successfully and I can tell like the difference between a good day and a bad day, do you mm-hmm. know, like when you're yeah. like on and you're mm-hmm. not on like those days and you compare them, what really, what I'm selling is my confidence and I'm selling that I know how to do this. And that's what it's really, I'm selling myself. I'm not yeah. selling the trip because I haven't designed it yet. Yeah. So I'm, I'm selling my ability to do this and that I, I'm, I, I'm confident enough in the conversation to be able yeah. to, to show that. Yeah, I'd and much that's rather be like the think, product development, go to yeah. market side of things, and then an awesome seller makes it happen. Yeah. yeah. That, like that would be and an ideal world for me. And there's a lot of that me. in the travel industry. I yeah. mean, if you did want to take a leap into a new direction, I mean, the, the travel industry is on the rise. Yeah. Um, but being a travel advisor, owning your own business, there are parts of it that I've learned as I've gone that are... I, I had no idea were so challenging. Um, have I? I've taken them with grace, I'll say, but there are definite parts that I don't love. Sure. You know, like yeah. of any business, like owning any business. Like yeah. I don't love marketing. I I hate marketing so much. I'm yeah. terrible at it. I'm really bad at it. I I struggle with. The, I wouldn't say you're bad at it. I see your posts. I'm inconsistent with it. Inconsistent. Yeah. I'm super inconsistent with it, so I struggle with that, and I it's on my list, but I'm like actively building my website right now, which is so Mm -hmm. exhausting to do also. And it's taking me a long time because I'm a perfectionist. There's just so (laughs) many things to get through. We we launched it and we're just building as we go. I know. I love that. Because I figure it out. I know you sent me it and I was like, you've done yours already? (laughs) How? You started like a month after me and yours is like, and I'm like, how'd she do it already? Partnership? Yeah. We helped. Yeah. But that's, Such an interesting concept of like being an entrepreneur has a lot of ups and downs and risk and freedoms and like good and bad, just like with any career. So like season, tell us where people can find you, right? Like where, tell us about all your socials, where people can book you. Well, all my socials are at travel by arrow, A-R-R-O-W. So Facebook, Instagram, I think I have a Twitter my husband runs. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, DJ. Hey, DJ. <laughs> yeah, he's my tech guy. Um, he does all my always IT stuff. always have to have a tech guy. He's my IT guy. Um, and he's my, like, spreadsheet guy when I 
get stuck on a spreadsheet mm-hmm. and I'm like, how do I sort? And he's like, does it all and it's done <laughs> in two seconds. And how do you know all this? But he works in corporate America, literally on a computer doing spreadsheets all day long. It's glamorous. But he, so glamorous. he thrives <laughs> in monotony though. Yeah. Like he, not, I don't, can't say monotony for him. He thrives in routine. Yes. Yeah. The consistent he expectation needs, yeah. of a day. Like he has, he thrives in the consistency, which is I think what, what makes us so great together in that way because yeah. he needs that and I need spontaneity and mm-hmm. challenges and differences and I need to live on borderline burnout to like <laughs> function to well. function well well you're doing it <laughs> like borderline burnout every day and you still show up to book club I mean how could we not how many books a month do you go through now <laughs> so many <laughs> we have a whole episode coming on book club oh, okay. right? yeah actually it already aired <laughs> okay. talk about this. I love it. Should go back and listen to our spicy book club. That. Oh yeah. gosh, you talk episode. About, you talk about. Oh this. yes. Oh yeah. The whole like that was great. The best what, you book even want to know? Yeah, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. So Tanya, tell us where we can find all things lush living. Uh, Lush Living. So if you go to lldesignsnc.com is our website and we will have all of our socials linked on there for you. Um, And Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, we will be in all the places. And virtual design. So you do not have to be local. We will offer virtual design as well for people who do not want anyone else in their home or if you don't live in the local area. That Um, is so accessible. Thank you. Absolutely. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. We have introvert friends, so yeah. we have uh, <laughs> design what options. I'm loving. Yes, like I cannot put right. pants on, and you can design my room. Absolutely. I love it, one hundred percent. And then, if you're looking to book one of my amazing Airbnbs in the Raleigh Durham area, that's bookcozy.com. Or if you're looking for somebody to manage your properties, that's Cozy Quarters Management. Um, and I can vouch time. for all these businesses being <laughs> fantastic. I know, oh, wait, you got to plug, you gotta plug Jenny. Oh, oh yeah. that's true. That's yes. true. Jenny, who's not here, has Jenny's a business. Jenny's not here. Her and her husband, Beto, have a business, Mambo Dinamico Dance Company. They've been um, doing Latin dance for 22 years in the triangle now. Oh, that's exciting. They're the longest Thanks. running, uh, like, evening social in the area, too. Ooh. In the southeast, yeah. Where do they go? Is it at Carmen's? Carmen's on Tuesdays, so yeah. my bestie's Carmen's uncle Cuban. owns Carmen's Cuban. Stop it. No <laughs> way. Crazy. Yeah, I'm from I'm a Miami Cuban, so uh, yes. Wait, Carmen's but that, is the best. That means of that course. like your family probably knows Beto and Jenny and them. I mean, well, it's not my family. It's my best friends. Oh, uncle. okay, okay. Yeah, still. So, yeah. And um, small, small her world. uncle owns it. I'm there from Miami, Miami Stay Miami night. Cubans, so. Are you really? Yeah. I should go with you. Please do. Yeah. The dancing is so good. <laughs> the food is so good. And then Mambo Dynamico is yep. the dance company. If nice. you want more information. And I don't that. dance, but I go sometimes. <laughs> Maybe I'll join you. <laughs> but like, I cool. ha- I'm they do way white. Everybody. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm way white. Okay. I got no rhythm. I'm like, not even a teeny tiny. Just gotta shake them hips. Okay. I don't have hips. We'll teach like, you they bachata don't instead of salsa. I literally You'll get it. don't have shaky hips. Um, <laughs> I did forget to say my website, which isn't up yet, Go but ahead. maybe by the time this airs, yeah, it will yeah, be. Yeah, it's going to be up. Aerotravelco.com. Aerotravelco.com. Yes. And she, we'll, we'll link these We're going to link Thank them you. also. Okay. And then if you want to follow ShePack, Unleash our lovely passion project, yes. you can follow us at ShePack Unleashed on all of your socials. Uh, not Twitter because we don't do Twitter. We don't have a husband to run that account. But Facebook, Instagram, <laughs> TikTok, all the places there. Nice. This is Tanya, Nicole, Season, and Ashley signing off. Thank you so much for being a part of our path. Stay wild and fierce. Bye, guys. Bye. Thanks for having me. Bye.